In the heart of the Norfolk countryside lie the remains of many a forgotten airfield. Derelict buildings and acres of concrete shrouded in tales of fighter pilots and bombing missions. Today, these former airfields remain as nothing more than memories to those who remember them. Luckily, at the former RAF West Raynham airfield, those memories will live on for a little while longer yet, as the station was still active until as recently as 1994, when it was finally shut down by the Ministry of Defence. Today, a number of veterans stationed here during its 55 years of operation are ensuring that this airfield shall not be forgotten. In May 2013, a fundraising campaign was set up to raise money to erect a permanent memorial to those who served here from the dark days of the Second World War until the station's closure 20 years ago. The cost of the proposed memorial was estimated at around £7,800 and funds were raised through the sale of pin badges representing the station's crest and motto, as well as cash donations. On the 27th of September 2014, the memorial was finally in place and ready to be unveiled to the public. Guard of Honor, march on the squadron banners. Just over a year ago, we met in this building here to discuss the possibility of raising a memorial to all those who served at RAF West Raynham from 1939 right up to 1994. We had this fanciful idea of raising two and a half thousand pounds to come up with a small memorial. The memorial wasn't very inspiring, the first idea we had. But a good friend of ours, Richard Flagg, who can't be here today, came up with this shape that we've got now. It took a little while to get going, but once we started selling badges and asking for donations, we actually hit £4,500 in the bank. In Vestec, we've got a representative here, uh, paying for the meal. Uh, the food that you can see in the entertainment. They've graciously given us permission to put the uh, memorial here. And we will also be getting 2,500 from the solar farm people that will be going on ahead. Um, the idea, as I say, was Richard Flags, but a lot of the wording that's gone on it and the hard work that's gone into it has been by Alan Pollock, a good friend of ours, who will talk a little bit more about it in a moment. So this is a family occasion, and I don't know if, whether the Air Training Corps are allowed to stand at ease and stand easy for a while. Uh, the Royal Air Force, as you know, really was all to do with the squadrons, and it was very difficult, really, um, knowing how to concentrate on what should go on the memorial. But first of all, many of you will know that 85 Squadron, post-war, were by far the longest serving squadron. And they served with javelins and canberras, and then with their bloodhounds. Uh, everyone really felt a sense of ownership of their squadrons. 
and I'd just like to thank Paul uh, for all he's done for every one of us and every one of these squadrons. 86 aircraft were destroyed during World War II and that represents literally hundreds of aircrew lost and you probably know that not all of them inevitably were lost over enemy territory. And the one thing all of you know who are over 50, over 60, uh, and the ones in their 80s know all too well, is that uh, it was really the losses during the World War II and post-war, and we're very fortunate to have Air Vice Marshal Les Phipps here to unveil the memorial. And it was only those losses and the steep learning curve of pilots, of engineers, and all the splendid ground crew in the Royal Air Force um, that you've got safe, reliable, cheap aircraft that take you all round and has transformed the world. And people take that for granted now. But Air Vice Marshal Phipps lost a great friend here, and he might even mention that to you. Uh, I remember his surname, uh, Rennie, sounds a Scots name, but I think Air Vice Marshal Les Phipps, when he has a chat to you now, uh, will move on from that. So could I hand over now? Could you come forward? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege and a pleasure for me to be here today uh, it's a privilege because I'm only one of many people, a great many people, who've served here, both service and civilian, in war and peace. It's a pleasure because it's so nice to be in Norfolk again. Those who were, who were here at West Raynham, I think all will say how much they enjoyed being at a very happy, a very good station. We also got to know the local Norfolk area very well. We took a special interest in the SSSIs, the sites of special social interest. And I can tell you, if you look in the good pub guide today, you'll see most of those sites of special social interest are listed there, which is very good. It's uh, interesting, of course, that we're here 75 years after the station opened and 20 years after it closed. All of those squadrons which Alan referred to during the war, there are too many to list, but we know that in May 1939, we had the Blenheims come, and then towards the end of the war, we had the famous Mosquitoes. And may I say, we are absolutely honored to see with us here today, uh, Wing Commander Don Webb, DFM, who was with the Mosquitoes and earned his award uh, during op Mosquito Operations in an innocent which he may have told you about if he can still remember. <laughs> anyway, after the war, the main unit here for a long time, as people will know, was the Central Fighter Establishment, CFE. CFE was all about fighters, fighters of the day, fighters of the future, and of the people who flew them. There was a headquarters unit, a sort of a, a think tank. There was a unit which did flying trials of the aircraft of the day and of the future, and an advanced fighter pilot combat training school. The aircraft here were in peacetime, far too many to list, but just going through one or two of those with CFE, we had, I think, vampires, venoms, meteors, hunters, javelins, and if I've missed anything out, I'm sure there'll be somebody here who can tell me. I was a lucky lad because I was able, as well as having a desk in the think tank, also to be able to do a lot of flying with the hunters of the day fighter combat school. Now, I used to spend a bit of time, as well as flying the lightnings and the hunters, <coughs> used to spend a bit of time flying the chipmunks with air cadets. And I'm just wondering, just wondering if there might be uh, somebody here today who I would have flown in a chipmunk all those years ago. Probably unlikely, always worth a try though. Now, with CFE at the time were 85 Squadron. We've already heard quite a bit about the famous 85, and again, it's good to see, tremendous to see, 
um, Group Captain Ed Durham here today, who later on became a station commander of West Rhine and himself. After CFE had moved, uh, there were the famous squadrons of 1 and 54th Squadron. Alan Pollock, of course, was part of that. And the airfield moved on to other things until eventually it went from aircraft to missiles. We saw 41 Squadron with its bloodhounds, and later, once again, 85 Squadron were here, establishing a long and good record at the station. And then, later on still, we had the uh, missiles, the rapier missiles of the Royal Air Force Regiment. And again, I know there are several regiment people here today. What a tremendous thing it is, they're here to support this occasion, uh, because the regiment, again, had a very proud history during their time at West Raynham. Well, as we know, and as has been said, um, RAF stations, RAF places, they're not so much about aeroplanes or buildings or anything else like that, not about hangars, not about missiles even. They are about people. And it's a tribute, I think, to all of the people which Alan Polk has referred to earlier on that so many people have turned out today to pay tribute to those. We're very grateful to see everybody. And so without more ado, what I would like to do is to get on with unveiling this memorial. Ahead. I think everyone, we're very grateful to have our local vicar who's been here many years, uh, Reverend Dr. Edward Bundock. And since we're having a brief service now, everyone really ought to have a program. On that is the famous poem, High Flight. And many of you will know it was a young Canadian Spitfire pilot who sadly was killed almost before he really got established on his first squadron. But he left behind this marvellous poem. But we're not going to run through it, but we thought everyone here, uh, particularly those who are not in the Royal Air Force, ought to have a version of High Flight. Thank you. Uh, we've asked Kenny Freeman here. Many of you that have served at the station will know Kenny. He's here from the 1960s right the way through till closure. He literally closed the gates when the station closed. He's worked in many places um, in, on the station and he's here to represent those who are usually ignored, that is the civilian workers who do such a huge job on stations. Mr Kenny Freeman. <laughs> someone here who is going to lay the wreath on behalf of the Royal Artillery. Well, lacking that, have we anyone, not from the Artillery, but from the Army, who would like to lay this wreath? Richard Leach, thank you very much. <laughs> would you please? doing this slightly incorrectly, really to honour the Royal Artillery that kept London safe with the anti-aircraft during the war. And sadly, uh, we had to leave them off uh, the memorial. And there were loads of other subunits. But as I say, the whole strength of the Royal Air Force was in its squadrons. So we've, we've concentrated on those squadrons because not only were they at West Raynham, but they were, went all around the world. Uh, and it's these squadrons that basically keep our nation free. Let us sing the first verse of O oh God Our Help in Ages Past, which is at the top of the right hand page. O oh God Our Help in Ages Past, our hope for years to come. Our shelter from the storm be past. Thank 
becomes the blessing of the memorial. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord, henceforth well without end. Lord, as we recall with gratitude for those who served in this RAF base, we ask our blessing on this memorial in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 We come to the wreath laying ceremony. Guard of honour, shun, carry standards. Uh, I think we'd like to start with the British Legion, and if also we could have it on behalf of the Royal Air Force, link jointly. Um, we've got Padre Wing Commander Ashley Mitchell on behalf of Mara. station commander. That's uh, through Captain Harvey Smith. Sorry, uh, a last request. We were hoping to have some for the Royal Navy here, from the Free Bear Arms Association, but I'm afraid he's too old and infirm to actually get here. Have we got any Navy people here? Jason! Free Jason! Uh, people have come from all over Britain, and I'm afraid, sadly, on the wartime squadrons, uh, they're very aged and infirm, okay, and we were expecting one or two to arrive who haven't been able to. The Royal Navy, as you know, is a senior service, and thank goodness we've had it over the years. 85 squadron now, and the Bloodhound. We've got Group Captain Ed Durham who commanded the station, but also was on 85 as well in the longest serving squadron. And at, at the same time, and with him was Bill Taylor. Uh, and without Bill, it's marvellous work on all the research. We wouldn't have been able to carry out this memorial at all. Uh, we've now got Marl Brown, who's going to lay a wreath on behalf of the uh, Royal Air Force Police. The proper branch. Rather special now. We've got Sam Brew and his charge people entering to the Marlins Little Museum in sort of linked with Marlin. And here is the future. Is it seven year old what or eight now? He's still seven, which is really good. <laughs> I think a, a, a round of applause maybe. Isn't that marvellous? Well, as I say, it's a family and informal affair, and what a marvellous effort. And he raised exactly £26. Pounds. Lastly, and again the future, uh, we've got five faces to fill. Um, it's a hexagonal design, really, by 85 Squadron when they were here, to celebrate how long they were there at uh, West Raynham, and included on the memorial also are some of the squadrons that flew from Massingham. I'd like now to ask number two face to come up. You're just here. Okay. Have we got number three face, please? Just here. Number four face, please. Number five, 
Yeah, I'm sorry, we've got to find out of order there. We've got Wing Commander uh, Don Webb, Distinguished Flying Medal. Um, they were even more precious than the Distinguished Flying Crosses, and it's splendid to have this marvellous Mosquito Man from 239 Squadron with us today. Extra special because we did uh, go to tremendous trouble almost um, at one time jeopardizing the project trying to get some of these marvelous elderly people. These are very precious individuals, and I think it would be appropriate now to just give some applause to this marvelous gentleman. And his We shall grow not all as we that are left to all. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the resurrection and the life. We pray for the repose of the souls, all those who've lost their lives in war. Grant them your peace. May they come to share in your eternal life. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Almighty God, we pray for all who serve in the Royal Air Force. May those who are there today follow the example of their predecessors, who by their gallantry and sacrifice saved our nation. And may they serve our Queen and country with the same zeal and ardour. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We sing the national anthem, the first verse. God save our gracious King, long live our noble Queen, God save the Queen. Send the victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us, God save the Queen. We now have the presentation of the RAF Tangmere and see if he battled the prison DC. Uh, can we have the unveiling officer? <laughs> Emma. 
Uh, this really, in a way, is a gift uh, from Tangmere, linked really through Dunsfold. And it commemorates the only fighter command Battle of Britain, Victoria Cross, Holder, who was with Commander Nicholson, who sadly, uh, later in the war, did extremely well in the Far East, flying boat fighters. Uh, then he was promoted after commanding 249 Squadron, had a staff job, and he was flying the Liberator, which sadly had to ditch, and only two survived. So he never completed the end of the war. Uh, my wife and myself knew dear Muriel Nicholson, who did so much for the War Widows campaign, and the late Mrs. Iris Strange, because without her noble efforts, and also those on the British Legion and other war widows, that great stain on our national honour, uh, which stayed there until 1989, uh, hadn't been removed. So now, I'd like to come on to this. And it's great that someone has come over. I think somebody's giving us a... We did ask uh, two or three places that we could have some air noise, and it's rather splendid that they've come and that uh, our service and the replay that took a little longer. You have 300, over 306 signatures on, the, on this print. So all the best to our air quest train in the future and the community, the Kitchens community. Uh, quite correctly, I think, we've called it blood, toil, tears and sweat, the famous quotation from Winston Churchill. And now we complete with the final blessing. Christ the Lord, watch over you, guard you, guide you and protect you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those who love, now and always. Amen. Amen. Can I say thank you very much to all those involved in this event, speaking as part of the community. We're very grateful for this. And I'm sure it's been something we should always remember. Thank you very much indeed. Just one last word, and that is... A very big thank you to Paul Lloyd, because many of us, I'm afraid, particularly my age, the last thing they want to be involved in is social media. But Paul, when he left the Royal Air Force, he went all over the place with it. Uh, he was here, I think, between 71 and 75 from memory, and he was a supplier. And logistics really is the key to success in all the campaigns making certain that the aircraft and the people that service them actually can do their job. And Paul's a splendid example of that. He taught for 20 years, and thank goodness he knew how to start his site, because I think without his website, um, none of this would have started slowly accumulating the money that we've able to improve the memorial and make it what it is today. And the last thank you is to Perfit's uh, the monumental masons because we had a very good relationship uh, because at the last minute we really wanted to ensure that great massing was included because their squadrons did so well as well thank you all for coming today and i hope you will all leave at least with one program and the knowledge of high flight thank you very much
The ceremony was followed by an aerobatic display by Henry Labouchere. The afternoon consisted of a barbecue generously provided by site owners in Vestec and manned by volunteers from the local community, followed by guided tours of the airfield. The site still boasts many original wartime buildings, including the accommodation blocks, water tower, and the four C-type hangars which dominate the skyline. Also remaining is the imposing post-war control tower, built in 1945, which replaced a smaller watch office dating from 1943. The station also boasts a number of buildings from the Cold War period, such as this curious dome-like structure which dates from the 1980s. Inside the dome was a state-of-the-art rapier missile training simulator. Today, the station's technical site forms a fledgling industrial park while the station's former married quarters have been refurbished to form a new housing development known as the Kiptons. The former runway, however, has been broken up for aggregate, with work starting on a new solar farm. But while the airfield's impression on the landscape fades into the history books, its impression in the hearts of the families of those who served here will remain indefinitely.